Hi folks and welcome back to Fisherman Den. Today we're going to be talking about feeders or more specifically the hybrid feeder sometimes still called a banjo feeder it all depends on which manufacturer you're talking to but the reason for this video is that I was watching a, a Joe Carras video actually the other day from Match Fishing Films that's his channel and he was testing out the new uh, Preston uh, banjo feeder or hybrid feeder and he had some great underwater footage to show how carp would come along and suck up the big ball of, of pellets or possibly ground bait if that's what you're using and just literally take it away and if your bait was right in amongst all that lot then obviously you get a bite and as he was saying if your hook's in amongst it and it slurps up all of that bait in one go you hardly even need bait on and that's what they're going for they're going for the big ball of bait so it occurred to me that I could make use of um, Joe's comments uh, to produce my own uh, prototype uh, feeder. And in fact, this is what I've come up with. It's larger than the standard sorts of feeders that you're gonna see. Um, and the reason for that is because I fish um, tidal rivers and large reservoirs uh, and so on. And in those places, the fish like large amounts of bait but at the same time, I still wanted this central area to hold a ball of bait, and that's where my bait, the hook bait, is going to be. Now, for anyone that's um, fairly new to fishing and doesn't really understand the difference between, for example, a method feeder, um, a banjo feeder, and a hybrid or hybrid banjo feeder, uh, let me just take a few seconds just to, to discuss that now. To start off with, we got these method feeders. They have different size weights on the back. Some of them have interchangeable um, systems where you can change one to the other, but we'll get back to that in a second. This one is a, a Preston feeder, and this one is the Guru feeder. Now this one is actually 45 grams, and this one is a lot less. I think this one's only 24 grams. But if you look at the body sizes, they're all pretty similar. Now, I wanted to get more bait out there because in a lot of the places I fish, the more bait you get out there, the more fish you're going to catch. So putting that aside for a second, that's the method feeders as they first started. And then I've just 3D printed this because this is uh, an invention which followed on from that called a banjo feeder. And as you can see, it has little wings around the side there. And what happens there is you put your ground bait or pellets or whatever in there, put your hook bait on the top and seal it off with a, a few more pellets. And then the idea is that everything is retained in here. That then evolved into this sort of style of banjo come hybrid feeder. And from now on, I'm gonna to refer to them as hybrid feeders. And again, it's got the raised sides and all the rest of it. And again, it'll have the interchangeable stems. What it didn't have was what I've produced here, as we just said, which is this sort of circular area, recessed area, which is designed to hold, let's say, pellets or corn and your hot bait, and then you either mould pellets or ground bait around the rest of it. The idea is that when the ground bait or pellets fall away, your hook bait stays in this ball of other bait here. So the carp home in, not on the little bits and pieces that have fallen off the sides, but on a great big lump of bait in the middle there. They suck it up, and they disappear and you've got a bite. That's the theory anyway. So what I want to do is to throw this open to you guys. I'm going to spend the next couple of weeks or so just uh, developing this, this idea um, from this. This is obviously 3D printed, um, but just to get your thoughts on what I'm doing. Um, I'll show you the design process in a second. And then what we'll do is we'll do some testing in the tank here to show you how these things operate when they're fully loaded. Because the last thing you want is for them to hit the water and then face down like that, because that would defeat the object altogether. So one of the first things we have to do is to make sure that these things sit with their backs to the ground. Obviously, we can't do that uh, easily on the river at the moment, but we can try it in this tank and we can do some initial testing on it anyway. And one of the things that came out of um, Joe's um, video the other day was that the um, alloy feeders that you see, alloy uh, hybrid feeders, uh, which don't have the, the lead on the back, 
there was uh, some concern over whether they do sometimes sit face down instead of face up. So again, these things have to sit that way every time, otherwise there's no point. We're just gonna not catch anything. So now let me take you through the design process itself. I'll do it on the computer, and that way you can see exactly what my thoughts were and exactly how I built it. And hopefully, by looking at the thing in a more of a diagrammatic style, you may come up with some ideas that I hadn't thought of. So, this is the application I designed the feeder with. As you can see, it's called Tinkercad. And don't be confused into thinking I'm in any way technical, because I'm not. Uh, if you watched some of my previous videos, you would have heard me mention that uh, when I left school all those years ago, I got three O-levels, GCSEs, in English, French, and German. I've got no technical qualifications whatsoever, um, and everything I know is just what I've picked up as I've gone along. And so this uh, application or program is very much uh, designed for children, but it works for me too. So let's get started and show you the build process. If I move this up, on the center of the screen here, you can now see the feeder as I've designed it. And that's what you were looking at earlier on. On the right hand side of the screen here is a more exploded view of what I've designed. And the reason I've done it this way is so you can see the, the thinking behind it. I started off with the basic shape, which is 40 by 80. And if you're wondering what all these shadows are in between the, the main shape, those are holes. Anything you can see in gray is a hole. So what I did, I made this five millimeters high, and then I gave myself that hole there. But before I put them all together, there's also the hole underneath, which is a two millimeter insert, which just takes the, the lead weight. And I made it square, even though it is sort of positioned towards the front end of the uh, the feeder. I've made it square because it's just easier to mold that way. That may well change and I may make it so it actually molds to the shape of this area down here. But all I do now is I'll click and select and then click group. And we've now got a rim around the top and the recess in the bottom. Now, I've chosen just to have a rim, and I think this is something like 1.5 or 2 millimeters tall, purely because I don't want the sides to come up too far in this area. If I come back to that in a second, obviously, again, we've got this section here, which is the part that you can see on the top. If I just group all that together, oops, don't want to select too many things. If I just group that, and it does it in different colors to show you what you've done. I've now got the basic shape as you see in here. I'll drop that down. I think it's about that, let's just check. Maybe one more, yeah, about that. So that now meets the, the deck of the feeder base itself. I've also got this little insert in here which I made as a separate item, and that creates the rail for the stem to run along. Just make sure I've got that right, just zoom in. And we can, yep, yeah, we can see all the way through it. So that's the basic idea. And then up here, I've just made this hole. I'll bring that down a bit. And drop it just a fraction more. And now we'll group everything together. And when it renders like that, you can see that we've now made exactly what you see on the left. So that's how simple it is. I am thinking that I may need some little uh, bumps on the bottom because I'm not only going to use this in fresh water, I'm going to use this in, in running water as well. So little bumps that stick out of the bottom here, possibly even on the lead, just to make the thing grip the bottom a bit more. And I'm also thinking of having a similar item to this ridge here on the bottom, again, to make it grip a bit more. But we'll see how we go with this to start off with. So that's the basic idea. Again, I can change any of these parameters that I need to. As I say, the stem goes in through here, all the way out through the top. 
And I've made this section in the middle here to accommodate the, the stem as well, so that the hook, when it's in to this, this circular area, doesn't actually manage to get trapped underneath there in any way. Having said that, we're going to see how that uh, transpires in the tank tests, but we can always change things, as I say. The circular area, which contains all the, um, the pellets or the, the corn and the hook area, that's probably, I think it's about 17 millimetres tall. I don't know, it may need to be a little bit taller. We'll have to wait and see on that one. But really, that's the thinking behind the thing. And I think now what we have to do is to take this to the tank and do some tests on it. Okay, well that's the test tank set up and ready to go. And as you can see, I've spared no expense whatsoever and used the uh, crisper tray from the bottom of my beer fridge behind me to do the job. Saves paying out for an aquarium, doesn't it? Joking aside, I've set it up with an action camera looking down that way, so we'll get some close-up shots. And obviously, I'll still have this camera facing me, but I'll probably zoom it around so you can see a bit more of the action going this way. In terms of um, setup of the new feeder, it's exactly the same as normal. You start off and you thread on a tail rubber onto your main line. You then thread on a stem like that. And then you tie on, this is a, a Guru speed bead to a four inch hook length with some um, sweet corn on a hair. And as with all of these things, all you do is you take your feeder. I'll try and do this backwards for you. Uh, Okay, trying to do anything backwards is not much fun, but there we go. So you put that on, push it in, and then through, and that's the feeder on. So that's interchangeable, just like all of these other ones. Pull your tail rubber down, and that's it, we're ready to go. Okay, I've actually managed to catch myself, but it's good for the purposes of a demonstration. But also for the purposes of the demo, what I'm going to do, obviously this is just a, a piece of line, I've put a, a number four slot shot on just here just to hold everything in place. Now you wouldn't have this on the rig obviously, but for the purposes of the demonstration it just helps me to, to show you. Now the first thing you're going to see of course is that when it's in this position it actually sits neatly on the, the line with its base downwards, which is exactly what you want. You certainly wouldn't want it to, to sit that way around, it has to do that. Now I've actually got quite a, a reasonable size um, weight on this one, it's a 45 gram weight and overall the feeder weighs about 51 grams. I can try it with the lighter one uh, later for you, but for the moment that's achieved uh, one of the aims. What we don't yet know of course is how this is going to respond once we've got ground bait on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the camera in and we're going to do some tests in the tank here. What I'm going to do first of all then is I'm going to take some of this corn and I've obviously put a, a couple of pieces on the hook already but I'm going to put that into the feeder just a small amount and then I'm going to put the hook itself into the feeder too into that little recess which I was showing you before and then I'm going to load it with ground bait. Uh, I probably will be using ground bait for mine because um, the places I go fishing, um, things like the tidal rivers have quite a current on them and I really wouldn't be necessarily sure that uh, pellets would stay on well. So there we go, that's the thing loaded up and ready to go. So if I now drop this in Hopefully, this camera here is getting all this action. Now, I've actually made this ground bait so that it's going to break up fairly quickly. Um, we wouldn't want to be sitting here for five minutes waiting for everything to, to, uh, to, to melt off. Uh, but that's, that's going off quite nicely now. And I'd just say probably in the next 10, 15 seconds, we should be pretty much down to the, the ball of bait in the uh, little circular section there. Now what I will do is I'll simulate some current like this because even with still waters you're going to get current and you can see now how the the uh, bait from the sides of the feeder has all flopped down 
and created a carpet, which again is good. That's what I want. I want to create a carpet, but I've also got this big ball uh, sitting in the, the central cup area. Now let's simulate uh, a carp feeding. <laughs> Excuse, this is going to be my hand. It's obviously just a bit um, sort of amateurish, but hey, look. So if I do that, immediately when I did that, that sucked out the, the hook bait, which is now over here, but that sucking action pulled it up out of it. So at this point, we should be looking at a bite. That's the theory anyway. They've also still got bait in the, the feeder itself, and it seems to stay there. I did a quick test earlier on just to check. And we do seem to have this little bit of uh, bait in there. Now, I don't know at this point in time whether to call that a good thing or a bad thing, because really you'd want it to come out, I suppose. But then again, if it stays in, then it's somewhere for the, the fish to target. And if your hook bait was still in there, that would be the best possible uh, solution. Now, obviously, this thing isn't perfect. We're only still in the uh, early stages of the thing, but that's how it's all going to work anyway. So just before we finish for today, uh, what I want to do is do some completely unscientific tank tests um, just to see how this thing may land on the, on the riverbank. Obviously, it's not going to be definitive, but I've turned the other camera on again and I'll zoom this one in down there. I'm going to drag this one around a bit and just see if I can simulate how it's likely to land. And I'll try and do um, something more scientific once we get onto the riverbank, but I'm going to have to work out how to, uh, to do that. So that's for the next episode. But anyway, in the meantime, let me just try dragging this around the tank first of all. So I'm just going to drop it in and see what happens. So far, it's falling on its back. It does seem that when it comes and hits this section here, that tends to make it flip on its back, which is good. I'll try and drag it forward as if it's hitting the water at a strange angle. And, and again, that actually just spun over when it hit the bottom. So I drag forward again. Yeah. It does seem that as you drag this towards you, it does fall in the correct direction, which is great. All right, well, that bit's totally unscientific. So what we'll do now is we'll put some unscientific ground bait on and see what happens with that. Again, I'll put a bit of uh, corn in the, the base of the circular section and we'll put our hook bait in. Get some ground bait on. I'll squeeze this a little bit tighter this time, just so to give us a bit more time. Okay. So that's what we've got now. And let's try dragging it around again. Yep. Try and get it to go forward as it hits. Oops. Yeah, it does seem so far that it spins around and works perfectly. Yeah, look. I don't know if it's aerodynamics or hydrodynamics, but pulling that round that way, the ground bait seems to pull it around. Look. Again, and immediately it drops um, on the ground. Now this is probably getting very... Um, murky in there at the moment, so we'll probably have to call it quits at that. But so far, I'm very pleased with that test. And that's about as much as we can do for today's video then, guys. Um, I've given you my reasons for producing this um, hybrid feeder. I've given you my thoughts on how I did it. And we've done a little bit of testing on how it works. And so far, yeah, looking pretty good. I have to say I'm quite pleased with this. But please feel free to leave some comments down below um, to give me some ideas, also your thoughts on whether you think it's good, bad, indifferent. Uh, the only thing we've got to do now is on another day, I'll take this thing down the river and we'll do a bit of fishing with it and see how we get on. But of course, until then, 
there's not much else we can do so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did as always click the button if you want to subscribe please feel free and until the next time bye for now